China is sending a message to the U.S. It's ready to fight for Taiwan. Plus, the WHO's China report is a disaster. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China News Headlines. The Chinese Communist Party has said for a long time that it plans to invade Taiwan. But when it does, the U.S. will probably respond. So now, the Chinese military is preparing for that U.S. intervention. That's according to Taiwan's Deputy Defense Minister. This week, Chinese aircraft once again harassed Taiwan. That's nothing new. What is new is how they did it. Radar readings show different groups of Chinese jets flew in a pincer pattern, surrounding Taiwan on three sides. And according to my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, there's a reason. The recent exercises show that the PLA is taking possible U.S. and Japanese interventions into consideration. Clearly, the flight plan of the Chinese jets represented in yellow are to handle forces coming from the U.S. or Japan. The Chinese fighters also happen to fly over at the same time as the president of Palau and a U.S. diplomat were visiting Taiwan. Wait, what if the Chinese Communist Party is actually afraid of Palau? Maybe they are, because that U.S. diplomat who traveled to Taiwan was John Hennessy Nilland, the U.S. ambassador to Palau. And it's the first time a U.S. ambassador has visited Taiwan in 40 years, which of course drew a red line warning from China. In other angering China news, last week the U.S. and Taiwan signed a Coast Guard deal, which of course China denounced. The deal means the U.S. Coast Guard will be working with Taiwan a little bit more. It does kind of stretch the definition of a Coast Guard. But it turns out, the U.S. has been deploying its Coast Guard to the Western Pacific to help allies enforce their claims in disputed waters. And the U.S. Coast Guard even intercepted a Chinese fishing boat illegally operating in the waters of Palau in December. Wait, Palau again? Be afraid, CCP. Be very afraid. But the latest group to offend the Chinese Communist Party is NASA. They called Taiwan a country. NASA has started a Send Your Name to Mars campaign. And in the Country drop-down menu, you could select Taiwan. But obviously, the CCP is very sensitive, and this hurt its feelings. So NASA changed it. Now select your location by picking a country, region, or territory. NASA, if you're going to cave to the Chinese Communist Party, what are you going to do when the aliens get here? NASA has been banned from working with China's space program, since it's run by the Chinese military, and it could be a serious threat to the U.S. national security. And yet, recently NASA admitted they exchanged data with China on Mars orbiters. Ah oh, well, it was a nice planet while it lasted. But at least the U.S. State Department is taking a harder stance against the Chinese regime. More on that after the break. Welcome back. The U.S. State Department has released its latest report on the state of human rights in China. The state is, there are no human rights. It calls the persecution of Uyghurs a genocide. It also mentions allegations of forced organ harvesting from Uyghurs and Falun Gong practitioners. China responded by saying the hearts of all Chinese citizens belong to the party. The State Department report comes a week after Secretary of State Antony Blinken called on NATO allies to join the U.S. in countering China. It also comes as the U.S. successfully got its allies to sanction China's abuse of Uyghurs. And a Chinese professor has been caught on camera, revealing the secret to China's success. And by caught on camera, I mean he posted this speech on Chinese TikTok.
，自由回头一看，厂房攒了，设备攒了，技术攒了，专利攒了，产品攒了，市场攒了，品牌攒了，老外全做完了。现在，所以我们的啊，杨杨外长和我们的王外长才有资格和美国在谈判的时候才那么强硬。你们是没有资格，这么给我谈话的。你发现回头看，咱四十年就干两次抄袭，一路抄到世界第一排。我们是野蛮抄袭、野蛮复制，什么知识产权、什么专利技术，高再说。可是突然间回头发现，两件事情出现了：第一，美国发现不让再抄了。That's what the Communist Party calls forced technology transfer. We did a full episode about it. Check it out. Also, I've talked about this problem in hundreds of China uncensored episodes, and yet. Foreign companies keep throwing their money and their intellectual property into the China market. What are you doing, Elon? The World Health Organization released its report about the origin of the coronavirus, and no one is happy. Scientists say it only scratched the surface. The White House says Americans deserve better information. The Wall Street Journal calls it the Wuhan whitewash. That's because the report is the result of a close collaboration between the WHO and the Chinese Communist Party, and let's just say the party might have withheld some data. Not that they have anything to hide. A former head of the CDC says the coronavirus most likely escaped from a Chinese lab accidentally, but the WHO report says, I don't know, maybe it came from animals, maybe not. I don't know. We might as well have asked a magic eight ball. But as the WH report came out, China also announced they're going to prove it came from outside China. You know what? Let's just all say it came from Taiwan. Then China will either have to admit it began in China, or admit that Taiwan is not part of China. It's perfect. And after the break, guess which world leaders now have the coronavirus? Welcome back. Both the president and prime minister of Pakistan have contracted the coronavirus. It was shortly after they both had their first dose of China's Sinopharm vaccine. These are the things you sacrifice when you ally with the Chinese Communist Party. Sinopharm claims their vaccine is 79% effective, although that has not been independently verified. Until it is. I'll believe it about as much as I believe the coronavirus data China gave to the WHO. The top Chinese diplomat in Brazil has taken to Twitter to mock Justin Trudeau. As tempting as it is, I will not take the Communist Party's side on this. The Chinese diplomat tweeted, "Boy, your greatest achievement is to have ruined the friendly relations between China and Canada." And have turned Canada into a running dog of the U.S. Spendthrift, spendthrift. There are way better insults than spendthrift. Why not try dunderhead? I mean, Trudeau is a real afternoon farmer, all hat and no cattle. Am I right? A real gadabout. He's a galumphing milksop, rambunctious sauce box. Now this may shock you. But a new study has found that Chinese loans to developing nations may pose some problems. The study looked at 100 Chinese loan agreements in 24 countries. This is the first study of its kind, and apparently, loans from the Chinese Communist Party impose unique conditions on borrowing nations, which could be giving Beijing undue influence over their economic and foreign policies. They also all contain confidentiality clauses. That prevent these countries from telling the public what's actually in the deal. Transparency with Chinese characteristics. Meanwhile, in Hong Kong news, the Chinese Communist Party has officially implemented the terrible things we told you they were going to implement. Among other things, the party now demands that only people who demonstrate loyalty can run for office, which makes it pretty much impossible for pro-democracy politicians to ever run again. And as a fun bonus, the Hong Kong National Security Police will be the ones vetting potential candidates for loyalty. But most Hong Kong activists aren't really thinking about running for office right now, because they're just trying to stay out of prison. On Thursday, seven prominent activists were convicted of unlawful assembly over a protest back in 2019. 
They include Martin Lee, an 82-year-old barrister known as the father of democracy in Hong Kong. Jimmy Lai, 73, a media tycoon and founder of the staunchly pro-democracy Apple Daily newspaper. And Margaret Ng, 73, a respected barrister and columnist. Clearly, these people are a menace to society. They now face up to five years in prison. And finally, the Chinese Foreign Ministry loves to spread propaganda through Twitter, even though Twitter is banned in China. Here's an example. After the U.S. Congress passed a bill condemning China for their treatment of Uyghurs, China's Foreign Ministry tweeted that ethnic minorities in China enjoy equal rights and freedom in religion and culture. China's ethnic policy is more successful. Yes, this is what I would call a successful ethnic policy. Or when the U.S. imposed visa restrictions on Chinese officials over abuses in Tibet, China's foreign ministry again took their favorite propaganda tool, Twitter, to say they would be imposing visa restrictions on U.S. personnel. China's foreign ministry tweets about a hundred times each month. The tweets all have some propaganda goal, whether it's criticizing the West or praising the Chinese Communist Party. And the CCP loves to use Twitter to troll the rest of the world. Twitter, of course, refuses to deplatform this dangerous propaganda machine. Which is fine, because it's not Twitter's job to censor people. But there's a way you can fight back and use China's propaganda against them. Students for a Free Tibet has created this website called Tweets for Tibet. You can pledge, say, 10 cents per foreign ministry tweet, and the money goes to the Tibetan freedom movement. Every time China's foreign ministry tweets, it raises more money to stand up to the Chinese Communist Party. Every tweet they make hurts themselves. It's a brilliant way to use the energy of the CCP's trolling against them. Now, to be clear, we don't make any money from this. We just heard about it and thought it was a great idea. In fact, we signed China Uncensored up to pledge $1 per tweet. So if you want to turn the CCP's propaganda against itself, check it out. Go to tweetsfortibet.com, and I'll put a link in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.